We know that we'll be taken into a world of adventure when a tale opens with words like once upon a time. They prepare us for marvels, for knights in armor, damsels in silks, fierce dragons, talking animals, magic potions, helpful elves, mischievous gnomes, and mysterious fairies. Compared with that, Luke's story of John is boring. How much adventure can we expect from a story that begins with names of rulers who mean little or nothing to us, detailed yet incomprehensible information about some date, and names of places that are hard to pronounce and don't even exist anymore? Why couldn't the evangelist have just written, Once upon a time in a land far, far away, the word of God was spoken to John, son of Zechariah, in the desert. The Bible does have once upon a time tales the two creation accounts in Genesis, the Tower of Babel, Noah's Ark, Balaam's talking donkey, Jericho's walls falling to trumpet blasts, all are such tales. Like poetry or good fiction, they are true, but not factual. It is true that God created the world in power and love to be good. That is the truth of the creation stories, which are not factual at all. Luke tells us that wonderful things are going to happen. Every valley shall be filled, and every mountain and hill shall be leveled. The windings shall be made straight, and the rough ways smooth, and all flesh shall see the salvation of God. That sounds like a once upon a time tale. And if it were a fairy tale, we would listen to it in a certain way. However, Luke is not telling a fairy tale. His story is real, the most real story, the truest story that ever was. In this story, God's truth and the world's facts are not merely close, they are together in Jesus. Therefore, we know that the way of the Lord will be prepared for real, and all shall see the salvation of God for real. Reality, that is Luke's message. He tells of a reality that can be located in time and place. So we get facts of geography, chronology, and history. It is Luke's way of saying, hear this story as you hear no other. This story goes beyond what you think of as fact or truth. That's an important message for us in Advent. This is the season in which we recommit ourselves to live in anticipation of the fulfillment of God's promises. It's a time to recall that those promises are real and that God intends them to be true in the real world, the world in which we live in flesh, not fantasy. The vocation of John the Baptizer is the vocation of us Christians, the Church. He was a herald announcing the coming of God's kingdom. So are we. He came in a particular time, the fifteenth year of the rule of Tiberius Caesar, to a particular place, the entire region of the Jordan. Each of us lives in a particular time and in a particular place. And in that time and place, the Word of God is spoken to each of us, giving us the vocation to call upon the world to make ready the way of the Lord. We live in expectation of the coming of the Lord. That coming is not a once upon a time thing, nor a someday, somewhere, somehow thing. The coming of God to me, the call of God to me, and my response to that call are something that happens today. It happens in a certain time and a certain place. It calls me to respond with my real life, here and now. Advent is the season in which the Church recommits itself to living a great adventure. We are a band of companions walking through a world of marvels and dangers to a promised goal, eternal life with God. The band is real, the world is real, the marvels are real, the dangers are real. The goal is real. Hi. Many viewers of this Gospel Reflection series have asked for a text version. So UCANews.com, in cooperation with ATF Asia, is publishing the complete series in four volumes called In Season and Out. 
The volume covering year C of the liturgical cycle is now available. Please see the ucanews.com homepage for information about ordering your copy.